the founders, when they talked about separation of church and state, it wasn't barring God from the public square. Well, so what did they mean? Most of us are for separation of church and state, but how far should government and religion be separated? I don't believe in an America where the separation of church and state is absolute. Absolute, it certainly isn't now. Uh, in some towns, the Ten Commandments are posted conspicuously in front of courthouses. Is that wrong? What about in God we trust being all over our currency? David Silverman, president of the American Atheist, says both are wrong. But Harry Meehat of the Liberty Council says it's a myth that the Constitution even requires separation of church and state. Really? I thought it did. Absolutely, uh, John. The words separation of church and state are nowhere to be found in our Constitution. The fact of the matter is that our founders were by and large men of great faith who were not neither ashamed nor afraid to acknowledge that our rights come not from man, not from government, but from Almighty God, the Creator God. And the first thing that our fa founders did after they enacted the First Amendment was not to enact some kind of absolute separation of church and state, but rather it was to establish a chaplaincy in the U.S. Congress and to hire not one but two chaplains to start every session with prayer acknowledging right, this so God. David, it's not in the Constitution. The, Where did this separation idea come from? The phrase separation of church and state doesn't have to be in the Constitution. It is, however, civil law. And when we're talking about the separation of church and state, what we're talking well, what about... What do you mean it's civil law? It has to it's come civil from law. somewhere. The, the, the United States Supreme Court interprets the Constitution. They came out with the separation of church and state. And it is civil law. It is just as strong They invented as the it out of thin air, essentially. <laughs> well, not totally it. thin air. There was this Treaty of Tripoli the in Treaty 1796. Yeah, you know what? The Treaty of Tripoli is the smoking gun that says, I win. It was uh, signed on order of George Washington, signed by John Adams, ratified unanimously. It says the government of the United States is not, not in, in any, any sense, sense founded, founded in the Christian religion. Black and white, smoking gun, I win, you lose. <laughs> You can revise history all you want to. The fact of that matter is that our founders were not afraid to acknowledge God, and they did that in our founding documents. The Declaration of Independence says that we are endowed by the Creator it says with their unalienable creator. rights. The founding they fathers weren't were afraid diverse. to acknowledge God, and they did. And they some acknowledged did. God. Yeah, some and throughout did. our history, our nation has always been a nation that blessed well, God. Well, Lincoln and Jefferson were not religious, right. so it's not all. And neither was Thomas Paine. Patrick Henry was. The founding fathers were diverse. What they did, they got together, Christians and all the rest of them, got together and put together a secular constitution. All right. that's all, all history. Let's talk today. I yeah. could see, Harry, that he, as an atheist, going into a courthouse with a big cross or the Ten Commandments, would think, boy, this court isn't going to be fair to me. He would be absolutely wrong. There are over 53 expressions of the Ten Commandments on our nation's highest court in the Supreme Court. I am surprised to see in God we trust on all the currency. This is not something the founders did. It started to appear in the time of the Civil War. It appeared on coins. It didn't appear on the dollar bills until I was 10 years old. Look, this is politicians monkeying around. Well, our founders acknowledged God in our very foundational document, the Declaration of Independence. Him. It's different from putting Patrick it on Henry. every coin. Patrick Henry, who was brought up, said that when a people forgets God, tyrants forge their chains. I've lived in a nation where God was forgotten. You're from in Romania. I, I grew up in communist Romania and I experienced the chains that the tyrants forged because they forgot they refuse to acknowledge that our rights come from God. They said our rights come from man or from government, but in which case the government were can take them away from Communist totalitarians, you. God or not, they would have been bad news. Once you take God and morals out of the equation, the sky is the limit, my friend. Once you take God out of the equation, everybody is free to make their own decisions, okay? This country, we can debate the history all we want. The question is, do we want a nation that picks and chooses who gets more rights than others, or do we want a nation of equals? My opponent right, here does not want say a nation you, 
Are atheist. you atheists or obnoxious objecting to these crosses, which are harmless of the Ten Commandments, getting in everybody's face? They're not your, your rights aren't being threatened. Every step away from the separation of church and state is a, way, is a step away from religious freedom, a step away from religious equality, and a step toward theocracy. And yes, it does harm us. For example, how? Where? When so you, far. When you're, when you're an American citizen and the money says that you're a second-class citizen, it harms you. When the Pledge of Allegiance is told to your kids and they have to pray to a God, they have to acknowledge a God every day against your wishes, that harms you just as much Harry, as it would harm Harry. what about It is not coercive nor oppressive for an atheist to allow his fellow man to express their public belief in God. That's just common sense. That's just good manners. Why should churches have a tax deduction? Aha. Uh -huh. Churches, like all 501c3s, whether religious or not, provide a important service to the public. Churches don't even have to turn in the IRS forms. Well, you want separation of church and state. Certainly, you don't want government I to decide. I see all these giant churches sitting empty six days a week. Burning paying up. no property look, taxes look, the United and not way. filing their forms. Billions of dollars, billions and billions of dollars goes into the church and we can't The United Way it. provides a how valuable service to the public, so do churches. churches. But if you have the That's government fair. reviewing the forms of the churches, deciding which churches have proper beliefs and not, that's not it's separation not of church and state. Your group has to file different forms. We have to file forms. Churches don't. We have to file 1090, uh, 10, 990s every year. We, If you want to go to the, to the government, we have to report our income every year. We have to report how we're spending our money every year. We have to defend our nonprofit status every year. Churches don't because they're churches.